This mini PC has a 12 core AMD Ryzen AI processor with an AI NPU and a faster GPU. You can expand the memory in this one up to 128 gigabytes, but two SSDs have dual networking and all kinds of crazy features. And for a little bit of spice, it has some RGB. There are certainly a lot to talk about in this little unit, so let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this is the Ace Magic F3A. And this is the first time that we're reviewing one of their systems, and there's definitely some funk that we're gonna get into. And at the same time, I think this has something special because it has the AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370 processor, which is a long name. I really wish that AMD just frankly made those model names like way shorter, but it has 12 cores in a special configuration that we'll talk about in a little bit. Plus it has the AMD Radeon 890M graphics, which is a nice upgrade over the previous generation. Now I wanna point out that Ace Magic sent us this mini PC. I did have some reservations that we're gonna talk about in our key lessons learned, but at the same time, I think that they actually came up with a package that frankly surprised me in how good it is. And by the way, we had to buy all of those RAM kits and we bought those using funds from the STH YouTube members. If you can go join down below and help support us, that'd be super appreciated so we can buy all the stuff that we use to put in here. Let's get to the hardware because there's a lot going on here. Okay, so looking at the front of the system, you're gonna see that we have a power switch, which lights up. Then we also have our audio combo jack. We also get two USB type A ports. These are USB 3.2 gen one ports. So they're five gigabit per second ports, not necessarily the fastest, but on the other hand, it's nice to just have a bunch of type A ports. The next one, however, is the USB four type C port, or at least one of them. And of course with USB four type C, you can go put a ton of different peripherals on there and get high speed networking or all kinds of things that you just didn't have access access to before. Well, at least in a mini PC like this. On one side of the system, it's some plastic. On the other side of the system, it's some plastic with a vent. In the rear, we have a whole bunch of connectivity, but let me get to one of the funniest little features by far, which is that they make this system so cool. I mean, there's like RGB lighting that goes all around it. They go through all that to make it look nice. And then they put the little green quality control sticker on the outside, like at least stick that on the bottom if you're gonna stick it on the outside of the case. But for some reason they decided, yep, we just wanna have it there in the corner and make it not look good. Getting to the rear IO, we have our DC input it says 19 volts directly on it. So it's at least easy to know if you need a replacement adapter, what kind you need. You also have another audio jack. Next to that, we have another USB type C port, which is a USB four port. So we get another 40 gigabit per second port with all the goodness that comes with USB four. Of course, next to that, we get an HDMI 2.1 display output, and then we get a display port. And then we get two, two and a half gig ethernet ports. Now these are real tech ethernet ports. So not necessarily the most exciting from that standpoint. Now the last two ports are USB type A ports. These are USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, so five gigabit per second ports. And the other feature on the back is you get a nice heat sink. We'll show you inside how this all works, but it is just kind of interesting, their airflow design, and we'll show you that when we get to our internal overview. On the bottom of the unit, we get some rubber feet and some vents. Uh, on the top of the unit though, this is where things get really interesting. So this little bar right here is actually a light up RGB bar. It um, really doesn't add much in terms of functionality, but it does look cool and it does differentiate this versus a lot of other mini PCs that don't have it. When I first saw it, I was like, okay, that's kind of gimmicky. I don't really like it. But then like, you know, it's kind of grown on me actually. And the funny thing is in like my workstation, I don't want to see RGB, but at the same time, I don't know why this just was kind of cool. Now to get inside the system, we're going to start with one of the more perplexing perplexities. Uh, so let's get to that. Okay, so let's start our internal overview with how we get to the components that we want to service. And you might think that this is a normal PC or mini PC where a lot of them you have to like unscrew four things and get inside. It's not, uh, well, in some ways. So first off, you have this little latch back here on the back of the chassis. Now this latch has a screw that's meant to make sure that the latch doesn't come undone, I guess. Now we have managed to not lose it, but it is a tiny little screw. So once you remove that screw, you're probably looking at this like, oh my gosh, did they make a toolless cover? And the answer is, well, other than that screw, yeah, they did, except, um, well, maybe not so much. And then once you get inside, you're left with this. Now, you have a fan, which I actually really like the idea of having a fan to cool your memory and storage. But at the same time, now you have four screws to be able to open this up. And once you get those four screws out, you can now access all of your memory and storage. When I talk about perplexing perplexities, they actually went through the engineering effort to make a top that is toolless, but then you have to really use tools to do anything once you open it. I just don't get it. 
Now, once you're inside, you can see that we have two NVMe storage slots as well as two DDR5 SO DIMM slots. The other feature that's here is that we get a Wi Fi 6 card, but I kind of wish that this was like a um, kind of just a higher end card or maybe like a Wi Fi 7 card. It just kind of feels like this is a pretty high end mini PC and a couple dollars more for better Wi Fi these days, I think is worth it, right? Now, there are a couple of different ways that you can buy the system. First, you could get one with, you know, a 32 gigabytes of memory and a one terabyte SSD configuration. There's also one that upgrades the memory to 64 gigabytes of RAM, which is frankly awesome. What we got in terms of components when we got this system, I would say uh, I am a little bit not like uh, not super confident in. Now, the first thing you can notice is we have some kind of like race on or like some kind of random SSD in here that is from a brand I've never heard of and never used before. And we use a lot of SSDs. So that is just kind of one thing that, um, you know, I, I don't know if I would really pay a lot of money for a one terabyte drive from a vendor and an SSD that I don't really know that well. Now, the RAM was another one that was just kind of, I don't know. Uh, so this is what the RAM sticks, the two 16 gigabyte sticks look like that came in the system. The actual chips are marked with Hoggy or Hoggy, H-O-G-E. I don't know how they say it, but that's the manufacturer. And they make some like uh, like RAM and also uh, SSDs and stuff. And they use all kinds of random components, but you don't really see that many RAM packages with their branding on it. So um, that was uh, that was a little bit weird, frankly. Okay, so like, here's my thing. This overall is a pretty good package, but like, I just kind of get nervous when I see no name or brand name components that I don't recognize. Recognize, especially when you have folks like Minis Forum and B Link and stuff like using fairly well known brand components a lot of times. Like that just kind of feels like a big delta between the two. So, personally, I mean, I would order the bare bones and then I would add on all of the other stuff, right? Like I'd add on memory and I'd pick how much RAM I really wanted. And then I'd also add in my own SSD because I, I just don't know if I'd spend an extra 140, 150 bucks for no name brand components. Processor is on the other side of the system. And in that processor, we have four P cores, eight E cores, but they're really not P and E cores like Intel would say. These are AMD Zen five cores. So we have our four higher speed and also higher cache P cores, which are Zen five cores. And then we have eight Zen five C cores, which are, you know, really focused on running at a lower and more efficient power level, but also have less cache. The benefit of course, is that you get the same instruction set on both sets of cores. And then you also get SMT on both. So it's not like Intel where like, you know, in some generations, when you have some cores, they don't have SMT and other cores do on the same chip. So it's just a nice, uh, I just think it's a little bit easier for folks to get their heads around. One other little thing that when Sam was doing the photos B-roll for this, what you're gonna notice is that there's this like little screw that's missing the screw head. And uh, we had one screw where the screw head just kind of popped off and I, I don't really know why. With that, I think it's time to talk about performance. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the performance of the AMD Ryzen AI 9 370HX. I mean, holy crud, like that's a crazy name. But what I will say is that we have tested this before. We specifically tested this in the B-Link SCR9, and this is a little bit of a different implementation. The reason it's different is frankly, the fact that we don't have fixed memory. Instead, we use those DDR5 SO DIMMs. Now in most workloads, having the DDR5 5600 versus the fixed LPDDR memory, we are definitely you know, getting lower on average performance, which is not great, but I'm gonna show you why um, maybe that's not so bad in a second. The next side though is really on the GPU side. The GPU side, for some reason we saw, well, not for some reason, but obviously because of the different memory configuration, we saw like 10% lower performance, which again, it's definitely something, it's pretty significant, but on the other hand, um, you know, the difference between the AMD Radeon 890M versus the previous generation is a heck of a lot more than just that, you know, 10% or so. So you're definitely still getting the benefit of the new and faster GPU, but on the other hand, you're not getting, you know, the full performance benefit. Now, of course, I know a lot of folks are really excited for the 395 plus, which will be coming out with the monster GPU, but those systems are probably going to be, you know, twice what this thing costs. Now, there is a difference in what this can do versus the B-Link that's not really performance related, but it kind of also is. Now, of course, default in the system, we got 32 gigabytes of memory in those two 16 gig DIMMs of unknown origin, and that's not necessarily great. But what I wanted to see was, well, if we have memory that is just SO DIMM memory, can we upgrade it? And the answer to that is, oh yeah. 
Because not only did we upgrade to two 32 gig modules, giving us 64 gigs total, we also said, hey, you know, let's just try those crucial 48 gig modules and see if we can get 96, and yes, we did. And then, uh, well, things got a little bit more spicy because our 64 gigabyte modules arrived. And as you can see, running behind me, we have this system running with 128 gigabytes of memory. Now you might ask, why do we care about a little system like this with 128 gigabytes of memory? There are three reasons. The first one is that you can just run more stuff. If you wanna have a lot of Chrome browsers open, well, or Chrome tabs open, you can go do that with this 128 gigs. You just have more memory. You also can run things like, you know, if you're running Photoshop or other things that just suck memory, this, you know, you can just get more if you want to. Of course, you are paying for that extra memory, but it's an option at least where it wasn't on the B-Link. Now, the other one I think is really exciting is that as this gets a little bit older, or even just if you're doing desktop development or whatever, you might wanna run virtual machines. You can run virtual machines in Hyper-V in even Windows 11 Pro, and you could run Linux and get virtual machines there too. And if you did that, having more memory is just kinda awesome, right? You always want more memory and you can actually run some pretty beefy VMs once you have 128 gigabytes in a system like this. And so I think for a lot of folks, instead of having like a virtualization or dedicated virtualization host, one other option that you have is you can have a mini PC like this, use it as a desktop and also use it as a virtualization host. So I think that's a great use for that 128 gigs. But of course, let's get to the one that everybody's probably excited about. And that's the fact that you can go run larger AI models locally because you're not bound by only 32 gigabytes. Remember, if you have 32 gigabytes of memory, there's gonna be some of that memory that's gonna be just devoted to like keeping Windows running or whatever OS you're running running. And so having a lot more memory means that, you know, the percentage of your total memory that is available for things like running a larger model is just higher. So one of the challenges with the Ryzen AI 9, 370HX has really been just the fact that a lot of the designs that we've seen have had soldered memory and you haven't been able to upgrade it. This is the first design where you can. Now, of course, because we are using the DDR5 5600, we do lose some bandwidth and that's important when we have AI applications. So it may not necessarily run large models as fast as you might want. But on the other hand, you can now do it in a tiny mini PC like this and get 128 gigabytes. That's pretty darn awesome and you can do it today. With that, let's get to the power consumption. Okay, so let's talk about the power consumption and noise here. Now at idle on the Windows desktop, you're probably gonna see power consumption somewhere in that eight to 15 watt range. Now it's a little bit higher, a couple watts more than we've seen in some other mini PCs, but it's not necessarily atrocious. Now, when we go and fire this thing up to 100% CPU load, what you'll see is that we get all the way up to 90 watts. And sometimes it'll sit like 89 and go up to like 91, 92 watts. And that's interesting because one thing that we've seen with some mini PCs is that it'll like it'll hit that 90 watt range for a little bit or that max range for a little bit and then it'll drop down. This thing will just sit there and just run at right around that 90 watt range, right? So this thing is definitely holding high power consumption for a lot longer. It's not just doing the spike up and then drop down. So you get a lot of performance over time. Now at idle, the noise is really good, frankly. It's uh, so it's not 100% silent, but we're talking about in a 34 dBA noise floor studio, we're seeing 36, 37 dBA. In that first minute or so, when you go and run 100% load, you're definitely gonna hear it. I mean, it starts to get a little bit louder, but you're talking maybe 38, 39 dBA, so it's still pretty darn good. And then when you let it run 100% for a while, that's when you're really gonna start hearing it, and it'll start getting into that 40 to 42 dBA range, and you know, we left it for a couple minutes just at 100%. And that's where it was. So if you are playing games or something where you're really using that GPU a lot, you're doing, you know, big AI things or whatever you're doing that you're really loading the system up, that's when you're gonna start to hear the fan. But I wouldn't say that's atrocious in any means. I actually thought that this thing was gonna be really, really loud, but it turns out that design with that fan and heatsink is pretty good. With that, let's get to our key lessons learned. 
Okay, now in all these videos, I like to have key lessons learned, and sometimes they're really simple. This uh, is pretty, pretty. we're gonna go through a pretty wide range here, right? The first one, and I think we have to talk about this, is let's talk a little bit about Ace Magic, because about a year ago, there were big stories about their pre-installed Windows images coming with malware. They apparently had a vendor that was installing that, and like, that's not good. Like, that's actually really, really bad. So to me personally, if a company has that kind of history, especially, even though uh, apparently it's been fixed in the meantime, I, I just wouldn't wanna get no name RAM, no name SSDs and stuff like that. Like I'd want a pretty well trusted brand instead of things that I don't trust, right? And so that probably means that for me, I would tell you to go and get the bare bones and go install your own OS on that, right? Number two is definitely some of the perplexing perplexities. Like number one, that little green quality control sticker, which is pretty mild. We also had things like the removable and toolless removable top that then has tools to get to anything that's useful once you're inside. But then there's other things like, well, let's talk about displays. Now, one thing that we found when we were turning the system on is that if we turned it on and we connected to the HDMI port, we got video output, which is what we would expect. But when we swapped it to the display port, we just couldn't get any display output, specifically when we were setting the system up. And I don't really know why that is. It's just um, we had to use HDMI. And frankly, I would be a little bit annoyed if I bought a new PC and I had a display port monitor, like a lot of folks do, and it didn't display any, uh, any video when I was trying to set it up. I would think that this was broken if I didn't have the ability to go and switch to HDMI. I think a lot of folks do. And if you do get one of these systems and you run into that, maybe this is a way to fix it for a lot of folks. Also, the BIOS in this are pretty darn bare bones. There's not a lot of options there. So if you wanna do something like you wanna allocate 96 gigabytes of your 128 uh, of memory to the GPU versus the CPU, well, um, you know, you'd have to go in and install the Radeon software to be able to go and do that. You can't do it in BIOS, or at least we couldn't find it in the BIOS. And it's also not a system that I'm gonna like hold my breath to get like really good BIOS updates and support for either, right? So just kind of keep that in mind. But like, you know, on the other side, I said, well, why don't we just try this thing? And actually this system, we have been using serving models with the 128 gig configuration like since we set it up, like that, this configuration is absolutely awesome. I think, you know, things like, you know, that framework desktop PC, and we have one of those hopefully coming with 120 gigs, that's gonna be a big deal for, you know, the segment. But at the same time, this is a lot less expensive and you can get it today. You don't have to wait until Q3 or whenever they're gonna start shipping if you order new. And so if you are doing that AI development, you wanna run 70B agents locally or other things, th this is the kind of system that I think is really awesome, not necessarily because it's gonna be the fastest, but on the other hand, you can get it today. It's relatively inexpensive and it's pretty nice. And hey, if you did like this video, well, why don't you share it with your friends and colleagues, but also give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.